Hello again, I'm back on my priest, and today I'm going to be talking about tracking auras once again. So when we first started, we talked about buffs versus debuffs, uh, and we set up basically the same display to track both of them. Arcane Missiles is roughly as important to an Arcane Mage as the number of Arcane Blast stacks. Uh, in the second video, we tracked a stacking trinket, which, give or take, will be basically the same display as what we did for Arcane Missiles and Arcane Blast. I didn't really treat it any differently from those, mostly because my purpose was to show how you can set different trigger conditions. Today I'm going to make more of a distinction between buffs and debuffs. Instead of just taking their nature, whether it's a buff versus a debuff, or who it's on, a player versus the target, I'm going to look at them in terms of UI design and say that there are some buffs that are simply more important than other buffs. And likewise, there are some debuffs that are more important than other debuffs. I think on first glance you might say, what would count as important versus unimportant? And I could say something like Curse of Elements is unimportant, and somebody will object, saying COE is a 10% you know, raid damage buff if you have a 25-man raid, that's an extra 30,000 DPS, or something like that. And that's not so much what I mean by important. I'm using the term more to describe how much attention the player needs to pay to it. So if you're a warlock, you'll throw up Curse of Elements, and that's pretty much the end of your attention to it. It's going to stay up pretty much for the rest of the fight. And the same is true of Death Knight Diseases. You're going to throw up uh, Frost Fever and Blood Plague, and while you might have to do a little bit of babysitting on Blood Plague, they basically just maintain themselves. There's not a whole lot of player interaction required to keep those running, so they aren't very important. On the other hand, you might play an Affliction Warlock or a Shadow Priest, where the majority of your damage comes from babysitting debuffs on a mob, whether they be Curse of Agony or Vampiric Touch. So to that end, I'm going to say that important buffs and debuffs should be tracked more closely and their auras should display more information about the state of that buff or debuff. I think to best illustrate this I'm going to start by building a dot tracker for my priest. You can see right now I use Forte Exorcist, I can just dot up this mob. I get some bars in the middle of the screen that show the time remaining, the icon, and they move from left to right to give me an idea of how much time is left visually without paying very careful attention to the timers here. And they're prioritized so that the buff I'm next most likely to cast is closest to my casting bar, which is where I'm going to be focusing my attention when I'm playing. You can see they shift around as a buff becomes uh, as less time remains on a buff, it gets close to the bottom, and as more time is remaining is on the top. So they're always ordered that way. And that's something I want to recreate with weak auras. Well, I quite like Forte Exorcist. If you're not using most of it, maybe you want a lighter weight UI, or you're playing a class where dot ticks specifically don't matter so much as time remaining, like a Death Knight, you might be better served by tracking your dots with weak auras. To get started, I'll just bring up the weak auras config, and I'm going to use the progress bar type. You can see it looks pretty simple. It's got some display options here that are pretty self-explanatory, not much really to say about them. You can change your texture, so I'm going to go voodoo plane. There's some text options on the left and the right, you can see here it's displaying the name. I'm just going to address space to have nothing there, and on the right side, percent %p is time remaining. And set its precision, the color of the bar, which I'll make black, and set the background color of the bar. I'm going to make it a little more transparent. And you can set things like uh, the border offset. I'm going to set this to zero. In fact, I'll just set the whole border texture to nothing. And you can also set the direction of the bars, you know, left to right, right to left. Um, I think I'll make this just stay the same. That looks fine. But I'm going to put the icon on the left. I'll scroll down a bit more. I'll make this wider. 
maybe a bit taller, say 18. That all looks fine. Set the low conditions to be priests who are specced shadow. And I think I'll put this to in combat as well. So I've got the basic setup for a progress bar to track a buff or debuff here. I'm going to give it a name. We'll say Vampiric Touch. So this will basically be how I display all of my bars. The only thing that's going to differ is the trigger for them. The first one is going to trigger for Vampiric Touch. My next one will be Shadow Word Pain. But otherwise, they're going to be all basically the same. So what I'm going to do is just set this up. Under Triggers, I've got Aura, Vampiric Touch. I'm going to track buffs on my target. And it's a debuff. This own only option I should check, but I'm going to leave that alone for now. So I'll close this. If I get in combat, it doesn't load. If I toss a couple of dots on the mob, it doesn't load until I cast Vampiric Touch. And then we get a progress bar with time remaining that looks very similar. My icon is on the left. And the bar processes from right to left. So that's a pretty good start. Bring up weak ores once more. I'm going to right click and choose duplicate because the settings for this are exactly what I want for devouring plague. So I've given it a new name. I'm going to edit the aura name here to devouring plague. You can see it's updated the icon. And I'm just going to drag it up a little bit. So if we get in combat, my Devouring Plague icon comes up when I cast Devouring Plague. Well, that looks good. So I'll duplicate this once more. And I'll call this Shadow Word Pain. And I'll update its trigger to have the appropriate aura. And I'll drag this down a bit. So if I get in combat, and I cast a couple of dots. Uh, Shadow Word Pain. You can see, while well, they're laid out poorly, they track the right information. Now one of the things I really liked about my tracker here is the way it ordered uh, buffs that are expiring to the bottom of the list and buffs that are going to be up for a long time to the top. And that's not happening with my Weak Auras tracker because they're not related in any way. Weak Auras doesn't know that these are all tracking the same thing. Fortunately, it has a neat function called groups that you can use to arrange things uh, and to set settings across multiple auras rather than having to click through. So I can fix that own only option that I didn't pick earlier in one place. Let's take a look at that. So I bring up weak auras and I have my three individual auras here. And I have two options. The first one is group and the second one is dynamic group. Dynamic group does everything group does and a little bit more. So I'm going to just make a dynamic group and point out the new things that it can do. So I'm going to start by giving this a name. Let's call it priest dots. And by default, a group is empty and you fill it with auras, which you can do by clicking on this little arrow and then clicking on the group. So I'm going to put all of these into there. You can see there's a little plus that shows the group or the, the auras in the group. And there's some up and down arrows that you can use to sort and order these. And if you want to move something out of the group, you can push this ungroup back arrow, and that'll kick it out. So I think I'm going to put Vampiric Touch as the highest in the list. So we have these items. We can click on the view and see they all get displayed. And they still work independently as auras as if they were in the regular list. You could you still have all the same control individually if you want them. You can also come up to the group and all of these display, load, animation, action options still exist, but setting it at the group level will apply it to the individual auras inside of the group. So I can come into my trigger where I missed this own only option and I can turn it on. The reason you would want that checked is because it's possible to have multiple people putting up the same debuff or buff on a mob. 
for example, if I'm at a 25 man raid, there might be three Shadow Priests, and we're all going to cast Vampiric Touch. If Own Only is not checked, it's going to say, okay, there's an aura on the target, that's a debuff, called Vampiric Touch. That's all of the conditions that I require, so I'm going to display this progress bar for it. But that's not what I want a dot tracker to do. I don't want to track everyone's dots. I want mine only. So by setting own only, that's going to filter it to say, is there an aura named Vampiric Touch on the target that is a debuff cast by me? And if that's true, then it will display. So you see, I only had to check this once, but it's been applied to all of the little auras. It saves a bit of configuration time. And we can use that to set new things as well. For example, animation. We could say that the you know, we want all of these to fade in when they load and maybe shrink. Let's, let's use grow and shrink. I like those too. And so by setting them once here at the group level, it's applied it to all of these auras. They'll fade in and grow. Uh, the second thing we can do is under group settings. We can move all of these auras as a collection. So we don't have to individually set this one's X and Y anymore. We can set it within the group. So we could say, I suppose the easiest way is to just move this, the group itself. We can just grab it and drag it. I'm going to set the X offset to zero, and I'll set this to maybe 250. Let's put it at the top of the screen so as not to confuse it with the other one. A couple of other things you can set. The spacing between auras, so you don't have to do it manually to lay them out. You can just come in and say, I want a one pixel gap. You can stagger them, which might be useful in some layouts, but not so much for me. You can also set borders around the entire group, and also backgrounds, which might be some for some, or might be good for some UIs, but certainly not mine. And then there's uh, two other options that are somewhat nice. The first one is this Animate, Expand, and Collapse, which if I click off Devouring Play, you can see the group's changing size and the icons in there are moving about to make space for it, so it looks pretty. And the second thing I can set is this Sort Order, which is going to sort based on time remaining. By default, it's going to sort by the order here, so if you had spells that you want to prioritize, you can just put them in the order you want. But if you want them to be prioritized by time remaining, like I do, you can have the dynamic group do that for you. So I'll try ascending. Uh, likewise, I'm going to set my gross growth direction to up. And let's see how this looks now. So there we go. Casting a bit. You can see the longest Time remaining is on the top now by recast Devouring Plague. Those two switch positions. So there we go, that seems to be working as you would expect it to. And it looks pretty similar, I just don't have the ticks or the uh, global cooldown displayed. 